Picking the right automation platform for Home Assistant isn't easy. In this video, I'm going to show you three ways in which you can automate your smart home. Home Assistant UI, Node-RED and YAML. By the end of this video, you'll also learn how to do a time-based automation, sun-based automation, sensor-based automation, two inputs and one output, and one input and two outputs. There's a timeline down the bottom if you want to jump to a specific section. Now, let's roll the intro. Hey guys, I'm Gio from Smart Home Makers and let's get going. Let's start with Node-RED. The easiest way to install it is to go to Settings, Add-ons, Add-on Store, and then search for Node-RED, click on Node-RED, and you can go and install it. You can see I've already got it installed. Once you've installed it, you can open the web UI and you can see the user interface. The automation that we're going to build is to trigger a lamp or a light at a certain time. So it's time-based trigger. To do this, we're going to use the inject node in Node-RED. So this works more like drag and drop. So you can drag it over here, double click on a node. And here you've got some sort of setting. So the repeat over here is what you're going to need to uh, change. You can put at a specific time. And here you can pick the day of the week and the actual time that you want to set this at. So once you've configured that, you will click done. Second thing is what you actually want to happen. So let's say you want a light to turn on. The second node, the called service node is what you're going to need. So you can drag it here. And this is red left to right. And you need to connect these two together. To connect them, you just uh, drag and drop in place. So you can see now the node is connected call service, just double click on it. And once you've configured your home assistant server, which you can do with this pencil over here, then you can uh, add in some details. So for example, let's go for a light. So just type in light and you can see this sort of uh, auto complete. So it gives you the options of what you can actually do. So you can toggle the light, turn it off or turn it on. Let's say you want to turn it on. Then we could pick either an area, a device or an entity. And I can like, for example, use this um, lamp. And under data, you can add more configuration like color, brightness level. But for now, we're keeping it simple in this video. We'll click done. And that's now configured. You can tap on deploy. And now that you've deployed it, this will actually turn on at the specific time uh, mentioned over here. To test it, you can actually uh, click the button here. And it will say it's successfully injected. Now we're going to create the same automation in the user interface in Home Assistant. We're going to go to Automations and you can find Automations under Settings. Click on Create Automation. You can see I've already got the automation created over here, but we can just do another one. And we're going to click Start with an empty automation. And we've got three main components, triggers, conditions, and actions. The trigger is the thing that is going to start the automation. So at this time, we're going to be looking for a specific time. So you can see, you can uh, click on time. We can set a fixed time. And we can say the time is whatever time, 10. Um, and once we've done that, you can see that this sort of populates over here. And you can collapse it so you can sort of see it uh, in a bit better way. And you can skip conditions and you can go straight to actions. And then here you can do a very similar thing that we did with Node-RED, call service again. And we're going to be calling the same service. So it will be light dot uh, turn underscore on. Now this cascades many more options. We have the three options that we saw before, area, device, and entity. If I click on entity, I'm able to type in the same entity. And here we can do similar configurations with brightness and all, all the other good stuff. So we just click save. When we click save, we are prompted to give it a name. So something that will be, um, that you remember. Now let's have a look at YAML. Now you can directly just type in code without using the user interface, but it's also interesting to understand that any automation that you create through the user interface also is also generating YAML. So if I just go on the three dots here, edit in YAML, you can start seeing how this is broken down in YAML. So you can see that we need an alias, which is the name of the automation, a description which isn't compulsory and we have this the same sort of uh, free 
parts of it that uh, trigger condition and action. We also have another concept of mode, which we're not gonna cover in this video, which is something a little bit more advanced, but the default is single and that should work for most of the time. So as you can see, there's um, indentation to uh, spaces precisely here, and there's always a little dash at, in the, on the first parameter, and then you can see that sort of these are in line. So that sort of is the configuration in which this is done. You can see, for example, target, has the two space also over here. And we're using platform time, we've got at. So if you wanted to change this to 11, we would really do something like this and we would just save it. And now this would run at 11 a.m. Let me know what is your automation platform of choice. And if you're getting value in this video, remember to like and subscribe. We're gonna start with the UI now. Let's modify this. So we're gonna keep the same action for simplicity, but we're just changing the trigger. And I'm gonna show you how easy it is click on add trigger and now we're going to use the sun so many automations use sunrise and sunset and it's super easy to do this is going to be based on your uh, location that you've set in home assistant right so you can set sunrise sunset and and that's it really and you save it and that's done let's have a look at yaml and how that has changed remember you can do all of these changes in yaml directly and actually i'll show you how you can actually do them right now you can either use the file editor, for example, and you will default into configurations.yaml. Go over here to the folder and navigate to automation.yaml. And if you have just started out, you'll probably have this only, the same automation over here. So you can actually see uh, the platform time over here. So you could already make changes, right? Look. This is the platform sun and this is the sunset and this is the offset of that sunset that we discussed. So you can actually do it, for example, 10 minutes before sunset, 15 minutes after sunset or sunrise and you can configure it that way. Let's jump into node red and see how we can actually achieve the same thing. Right, so we've got our core service that we used in the previous automation, but now we need to use something else. So instead of using the inject, node we're going to be using the uh, state node so drag the event state so what this actually means is has a state actually changed in home assistant so has any of your devices changed and because the sun is actually an entity so as you can see it has sun.sun then you can actually change the configuration now this is slightly less intuitive in my opinion because you don't really have this sunset sunrise and if you put something like sunrise over here and you go done for example and then you would you you have two buttons here so this gives you a true and a false so you can negate the statement or i would always go with the true statement so if you want to do a sunrise automation you put sunrise for example and then you drag this over here now the uh, thing to consider is that in home assistant the values so the state of sun dot sun isn't really sunrise or sunset um, that's actually what happens. But so to find out what they are, go to the developer tools where you see this sort of uh, hammer, go to states, and then you can search for sun.sun. .sun. And you can see here that the current state is above horizon. So those are the states that you're going to need to use. You can actually find a, a document, the documentation will list all of the possible values also, so you don't have to look at the developer tools, but the developer tools will give you an example of what it is now. So you could do is above horizon. You can also switch it around, right? So instead of figuring out what the other value is, you just put it's not above horizon, and this would uh, work on the reverse. You can also do something like this. So you can have it um, is above horizon, but then use the false node. So it will depend of how you've configured it. So um, it's a little bit more advanced and once you're done you'll click the deploy button and we're good if you want to use a motion sensor i'm not going to show you in all three platforms but the way it is it's super simple it's exactly the same as if you were using the sun for node red it will be the same you will be just changing what the entity id is so we can just pick any motion sensor and then the motion sensors are normally on or off so if the motion is on then we want to do turn the lights on or whatever we want to do. Or in this case, we turn them off. So we just want um, the garage motion sensor to be off and we will deploy it. So with Node Red, super, super simple to change. Let's go and check Home Assistant UI and YAML. Cool. So we're going to go three dots, delete this trigger, 
and we're going to add a new trigger. Now the trigger over here that we're going to need is called state. So what we use, we use sun, we're going to use state. And the state that we're going to pick is a motion center. So we're just going to go pick any motion center. We've got the entity over here. Great, fantastic. And then we can say, you know, if it was from off to on, save. And now if we pull it back, we've also got the four option. So for how long this um, has, has changed for. So if you want to like reduce uh, false motion sensors, you maybe you can put like, you need at least five seconds of motion, but just bear in mind that that will create a delay in your in the response. So think of that. The fourth, probably you want to use it when you're turning them off. So if the state has been off for at least 20 minutes, so there's been no motion for 20 minutes and we'll turn the lights off, for example. So this is how we can set it up like this. And the cool thing is that this sort of symbol is also updated and also um, the text here updates quite simply and YAML also updates in the same way. Um, as you can see, we've got the states off and on. The advantage that we have with the UI is that, as you, I don't know if you've spotted it earlier, but uh, in the UI you can actually see the values. So it prompts the possible values off, on, unknown and uh, unavailable. Now let's cover two inputs, one output with no dread. It's super easy. So you just go copy and paste with Control C, Control V, or Command C, Command V if you're on a Mac. Now you have two inputs. You would just change this to some sort of other motion sensor or anything else. And then you can just uh, drag it in. You can have multiple sensors. So if we pick, for example, um, the one we built previously, so you could have it, uh, you can have this action over here. So the service being called with n number of sensors. So it could be either if this uh, motion sensor is triggered or this one or at this time or at the sunset. So how we replicate this in a home assistant UI is that we simply just add trigger. So you can see we keep the existing trigger, we just go add trigger, we just take say sun, sunset, done. Right, so we've got second trigger and we can add, keep adding triggers in. Um, and then we'll keep the one action. For YAML, this shows in this way, it's um, pretty much copy and paste. So you can see you have copy and paste. So if we were to do something like, okay, we wanna have it running at sunrise. We also want it at sunset. We just copy and paste and just change the value to sunset. For example, and go save and we sorted, right? So that's also done and you can see I've made the change in, in YAML and it's reflected in the UI. So that's how you can uh, roll. How do you actually do multiple actions? Well, you probably guessed it, exactly the same. So you can also duplicate actions. So to make it super quick, so you can duplicate the action and then you can um, change, for example, the entity. So you've got the X here, go pick another entity. Yeah, this one, save. And now you can see you've got two actions. So. Basically, if any of these three happen, then these two things will always, will both happen at the same time. Um, and YAML, three dots again, and you can see it's pretty linear. So you could do this pretty simply, you could just copy and paste, and then have one and keep going that way. Let's jump into Node-RED. So Node-RED, what, what are we going to do? Well, is we copy and paste, you know, this will be uh, some other thing we're going to be turning off. And now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to plug it in. Now the interesting thing with Node-RED is that what you can do, which you can't really simply do with the UI and YAML, is you can have a, a bit more complex situation. So let's say if you had three um, things triggering one, if you wanted to do three triggering two, well, we need to drag them all into the second one. Okay, so that's that. But let's say you want these two to trigger both but this one only to trigger one. Well, you just delete the line and you can see that this guy has three things connected to it and this one has only two. So that's sort of the super uh, easy way. So if you have something a little bit more complex like this scenario over here, uh, maybe Node-RED is the way to go. And just as a reminder, Node-RED also works with code. So you can actually also export uh, code in a JSON format and you can use that, for example, to share that and post it on forums or ask for help for troubleshooting. And you could also import things. You can also import code 
the input button if you find some super interesting things that you uh, want to put in your system. I really hope you find this video interesting. I'm going to leave a link down below with my full Home Assistant Lifetime Bundle courses. In the Lifetime Bundle, you get access to a bunch of courses. One of them is sort of dedicated to Node-RED and YAML automations, but there's plenty of other stuff like dashboarding, NAS, networking, Home Assistant builds. I'm going to leave you another Home Assistant versus Node-RED video over here. I'll see you next one. Ciao.